Good morning. Uh, most of us are familiar with fun funeral protocols, and this is a bit different than most funerals. I'm having opening remarks on behalf of the priests, my brother priests, and of course in Thanksgiving for Monsignor's family who were so important to him and you to him and the ways that you trained him too as a young boy and of course throughout his priesthood. So how did this happen? Well, last, the last week of Monsignor's life, he was still using his cell phone. I was surprised when I got a call and saw his name appear because I knew he was pretty ill. And I received two phone calls from him. They were short and usually Monsignor was not short on words, but he said, Charlie, priests older than me generally call me Charlie, would you say a few words at my funeral? Well, I thought he was probably a bit delirious and probably didn't know what exactly he was asking. Unfortunately, he told Matt Altoff too, so I couldn't get away with it. And so that's how this happened to have some remarks on behalf of the priests for Monsignor. All the priests could speak so well of this priest that had accomplished so much in his life and yet had such a humility and a spirit of humility about him. The past five years as I've been pastor at Holy Spirit, one of the real blessings has been being close to Prince of Peace where a number of the retired priests are in residence. And Monsignor loved having people around him. Friday lunches were very important. Many of us were invited to lunch over there. Monsignor's table was always filled with priests. He loved to have priests interact with him, to enjoy life with him, and to talk about all sorts of things. Whenever a priest entered his rectory, that was the most important thing for him. He dropped everything. He gave undivided attention and hospitality to priests even in his schedule. He always seemed to have time for priests. And that was an important part of who he was as a priest himself. Just a few personal remarks. I was always amazed that he could figure out his schedule. He carried a little pocket calendar that had so many things in it, I don't know how he figured out where he was supposed to be. He always seemed to get it though, somewhat accomplished, but he was always it always amazed me that he knew exactly where he was supposed to be at a given time. One of my I guess uh, things that I think of in my priesthood is I was pastor at St. Michael Parish. Monsignor became my associate. And here's how that happened. He was my highest ranking associate, by the way. Between Bishop Carlson, before Bishop Swain arrived, we lost Father Darrell Lamberty, the pastor in Webster. I didn't know who to send there. But I had an older associate, Dave Axman, and he had been with me for about six months at St. Michael's. But there was really nobody else in the diocese to send, and Dave was already a pretty veteran person himself as a lawyer and a priest, and he went up to Webster. But that left me without any associate at St. Michael Parish. I called Monsignor. I said, Richie, you want to join me at St. Michael's for a while? He said, I would love to. And he became my associate for six months. He was wonderful, giving retreats to the staff, to the parish, of course his homilies and all the experiences he had throughout his life were always so, so ways in which they could entice people deeper to the Lord and deeper in faith. And so those were great memories I've had of working with him throughout the years. Lots of times of just stories with him and Monsignor Doyle. Bishop de Groot is so important to have the associates have great assignments. And both Monsignor Mahold and Monsignor Doyle were with Monsignor Brady and Mitchell, Holy Family and Mitchell. And both of them used to say, 
it was really one of the pinnacles of their priesthood. They loved Monsignor Brady, and both of them were so well trained by Monsignor in the ways that they were to give their life, not only for their own priesthood, but for their people. As you know, Monsignor had a deep love for Cardinal Newman, who was just uh, canonized a year ago by Pope Francis. And Monsignor was the last, I would say, several years, probably the last four or five, he was already getting prepared to diminish. And he talked a lot about that, of diminishing, of diminishing of his own personal things so that people wouldn't have to spend a lot of time doing that after his death, but getting ready to die. And I'd like to end from a Cardinal Newman sermon on the first Sunday of Advent. I think this uh, summarizes not only Cardinal Newman, but our own loved, beloved Monsignor Mahold. We are going on right to death, a truism yet not felt. We are on a stream rushing towards the ocean. Every morning we rise nearer to death. Every meal we take, every time we seek our friends, near the time when we shall lose them. We rise, we work, we eat. All such acts are as milestones. And as the clock ticks, we are under the sentence of death. The sands of the glass run out, we die. Seek the Lord, therefore. This is the conclusion I have come to. This world is nothingness. Seek him where he can be found, in the Catholic Church. He is here in the same sense in which we are. Thank you for your beautiful priesthood, Monsignor, and may God give you now eternal rest. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Richard died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Richard, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Daniel. Daniel mourned, and I heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord.
You have prepared a banquet for me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is no Second reading, 1 Corinthians. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, 
but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. One never knows when a companion will come into our lives and they will say words that stir the depths of our heart. But unlike what we heard in our gospel reading today, where Jesus, unbeknownst to the two as they were making their way to Emmaus, would walk with them. And that beautiful line we hear in their passage, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way, and open the scriptures to us. We see in this beautiful model of the gospel, Jesus as the good shepherd. A good shepherd is the servant of the servants of God. His family, the beautiful words that the family have shared with me about how wonderful a brother, what a great love he had of being able to do the weddings and the various celebrations for the family. But he loved you much he journeyed with you. And even the little expressions that you would give of those little sayings were not our hearts burning within us. Wasn't there something in those words that said to us something so much more that might appear on the outside? When the Christ lives within us, it speaks to our hearts. As brother priests, those of you who know much better than I, the words that he would say to you, the witness he would provide, the teachings that he gave, as Father Simple identified at the beginning, a servant of the servants of God, all of his time ministering to priests in various ways, manifesting love. And one of my last calls with him, he said, Bishop, I love you. And tell my priests, the priests, I love them. So not something that stirs within our hearts when we hear that from him. Because we know it's not just surface words, it's not just nice things to say. It's a man who meant what he said. I'm just a new kid on the block. How could he love me so much, so well? My heart has been burning within me. I feel so unworthy to preach. So many more know him so much better. But a servant is not concerned about who it is that anoints or preaches. Because we know in beautiful Monsignor is this great love and belief in the power of Christ doesn't matter if I preach or somebody else preaches. Why he wanted me to preach, I have no clue. Other than he loved me, although I'm so new on the scene, and because his love of the office of the bishop is the local shepherd. How could I be so fortunate that the first funeral I celebrate be the one of Monsignor's, 
the servant of the servants of God. How well he teaches us in his witness and example, his humility and his love, as you all know, much, much better than I. And yet, are not our hearts burning within us? When our hearts burn within us, the love of God grows ever stronger. And as we celebrate a funeral mass, it's very important for us to remember, as we heard even within our first reading, what it will be like at the end of times. And the Lord will take those who are wise to heaven. How we long for that day to be reunited with those we love. But the beauty is we are never separated spiritually. And the gift that's been given to us in the physical and spiritual presence of Monsignor, his physical presence will not be with us in the same way. But his spiritual presence can always be with us if we are present to God and in God with him. I've been praying to Monsignor, saying, Monsignor, you've got to help me. I don't know what to say at this homily. It doesn't matter what I say. It's how what resonates in your heart. Because a humble servant is the one who's not concerned by exterior things, but the manifestation of love in the heart and belief in the power of the sacraments. I'll give you one simple example. When he was nearing the end, I so wanted to go visit him. But he so clearly insisted, no, I'm good, I've been anointed. I didn't need to anoint him. He was anointed by a priest. Thanks be to God. He needed so little because he believed so much. His little humble way of so many of the positions he had in the church were not glorious positions places of great honor, but often the servant of those who had the positions of great honor. And how could he do it with such joy? Because it wasn't the position that mattered. is that he could love well in the way that God's plan of providence would be in his life. As I've watched him draw closer to his end, and as he insisted that I not come visit him because he did not want me to get COVID. <laughs> so grateful to be able to share my love with and for him. I'm so grateful in these last days, even since his parting, to be able to continue the communion, the friendship that grows ever stronger with each passing day and the beauty of the gift of the immortal soul the beautiful gift of those who believe transcends what we can know in this human end. And I especially speak to you, dear family, having lost one of your brothers just a few weeks ago, or your uncle, whatever the relationship, and now to lose your beloved Monsignor. May we never forget that he has never lost can always be present in God's beautiful way of communicating with us from heart to heart. Reflect on those times where those words, his little expressions, his little ways of manifesting love, they can continue to be opportunities to let our hearts burn within us as the scriptures are brought alive, as we anticipate being with him in heaven. What a beautiful gift it is when we, like these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, say to Jesus, say to Monsignor, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. Monsignor, stay with us. Our Lord, stay with us. May our eyes, like the eyes of these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, be opened. May we recognize you. May we recognize Jesus in you, Monsignor.
We thank you for the ways that you were so humble, so little, so lowly in life, so that God could be great through you. His beautiful prayer card, it's a beautiful Latin expression, consumatum est, it is finished. And on his casket here lies the cross, which are these words of Jesus, it is finished. His work here on earth in the physical way is finished. As Jesus, as Monsignor was, was to be a servant, to be a sacrifice offered for the glory of God, for the redemption of souls. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving Monsignor so well. Thank you for letting him be an instrument like Jesus to teach us how to live and how to love. Stay with us. Stay with us. And may our hearts burn always with the love of God. I invite you to please rise. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Richard received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. For our brother Richard was nourished at the altar of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Our brother Richard shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. We pray to the Lord. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all the departed whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all the departed whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for the happy repose of the soul of our brother Richard. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the joyful expectation of your son's glorious coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Richard, your servant and priest, may behold with charity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
invite you to kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Richard, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Richard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Invite you to kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please rise and let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Richard, Richard, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father, mercies, we commend our brother Richard in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Richard in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamus, Exules Filiae, A Te Suspiramus, Gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Ea echo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostem Dei. O clemens, O Peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.